Hi everyone, in this video I'll be doing Advent of Code 2021, Day 14. Let's get started with the puzzles. Alright, now let's explain the puzzles. Day 14, Extended Polymerization. The incredible pressures at this depth are starting to put a strain on your, on your submarine. The submarine has polymerization equipment that would produce suitable materials to reinforce the submarine, and the nearby volcanically active cave should even have the necessary input elements in sufficient quantities. The submarine manual contains instructions for finding the optimal polymer formula. Specifically, it offers a polymer template and a list of po uh, pair insertion rules, your puzzle input. You just need to work out what polymer would result after repeating the pair insertion process a few times. So, our input is in the form of an initial polymer string, and then a bunch of replacement rules. What we have to do is run the replacement rules a total of 10 times, and then compute a difference between the most common and least common elements. Now, the actual implementation here is a bit tricky, so let's do an example. If we're starting with NNCB, then first of all, NN gets replaced with C, um, so a C is actually inserted in between, not replaced. So we get N, C, N, C, B. Um, then the second N, C becomes an N, B, C, because this rule uh, says that A, B should be inserted between N's and C's. And then finally, C, B is, uh, has an H inserted in the middle. Now, it's uh, important to note that these insertion rules run simultaneously. So we can't do something like this, N, N, CB, suppose that NN gets inserted with a C, NC gets inserted with a B, and NB gets inserted with an H. Okay, so we have to run this simultaneously. Basically, that means that we construct a new string that takes in, uh, into consideration all of these replacements. So what we can't do is say, okay, NN, insert a C in the middle, and then NC, uh, gets a B, so we insert a B right there, um, and then NB has an H, uh, there's no NBs there, but I'm pretty sure, actually this might be correct, but um, in some cases this will not work, so we can't just loop through it and replace rule by rule, we actually have to replace simultaneously by constructing a new string, so here's how we would do that, here's how I did that. Um, my code is right here. It's pretty simple. Just replaces all the pairs according, actually inserts stuff according to the rules in the input. So let's say we're starting with NNCB, right? NNCB. Uh, I'm going to construct a new string. First, it starts empty uh, right here. We iterate through this original string. So first, we're starting at the first N. We looked at the next two characters, including the current one. If these two are in the rules somewhere, then we first add the add the add the first character, right? Um, and if these two match a rule, then we insert this new character into the middle here, um, and then we move on to the next one. Uh, and first thing we do for this one is we add an n, and then we look at the next two n c. Hey, that means we need to insert a b here, so we insert a b here, um, and then we move on. Uh, and now we see a C, okay, uh, look at the next two, C, B doesn't match anything, so we just put a C. Um, and then B, the last character, um, is just as it is. So that's what's going on in my code here. I'm constructing a new string, looping through the original string, checking for rules, and if it matches one of the rules, then I insert the middle character inside. Um, and this is really the core of the solution to the puzzle here. Uh, we're constructing the new string a total of 10 times, not 40 times, uh, for part one, and then we're just printing out the answer, uh, which is the difference between the maximum and minimum number of occurrences of any element. Do note, however, that the input includes elements other than H, N, C, and B, because there are lots of elements that start with not just those letters, which is convenient, I guess. So, yeah. Uh, just a comment, I don't know if these would actually work as, like, real compounds. Um, I don't know. I don't know that much about chemistry. All right, now for part two. We do the exact same thing except with 40 steps. Now, this should be sort of familiar. This should remind you of day six, Lanternfish, where part two is simply to extend 
um, the input size to a way bigger number. So 40 instead of 10 is going to result in a much longer polymer string. And how are we actually going to tackle this? Well, we have to be a bit smarter. And if you watch the Lanternfish video, then you would know that we're going to use frequency analysis. And how we're going to do this is basically we're just going to keep track of how many times adjacent uh, adjacent pairs occur. So let's take this input string, for example, um, right here. We're going to keep track of a dictionary or a map, um, whatever is the data structure in your favorite language. So right here in the input string, we're going to keep track of a frequency count. So NB right here occurs once. Actually, no, it occurs twice. BC occurs twice. CC occurs once, and so on. Now, when we update, actually constructing this is pretty simple, first of all. Uh, we just literally go through every single pair in the input and add that to the frequency dictionary. After that, to actually update a frequency dictionary, uh, what we have to do is first loop through all of the pairs, which are keys, um, and I'm calling that into a variable pair. And if that matches any of the rules, so for example, NB, uh, we need to insert a B between the N and the B. So what we're going to do here is we're going to first delete all instances of NB. So NB is going to get reset to zero. And then we're going to do, uh, we're going to insert NB because NB has a B in the middle, right? Um, and that's going to result in NBB. And notice that this, first of all, reduces uh, all instances of NB to zero because they're all replaced. Uh, then we add that many instances of NB back. This is actually a poor example. Let's do something else. Um, let's, let's say we have BC, right? BC is replaced with, okay, actually, no, let's go with CC. So CC is replaced with N. So we're going to end up with CC uh, becomes CNC. So there's one occurrence of CC, um, and how we're going to update this is first we're going to delete all instances of CC, so it goes back to zero, and then notice that every time a CC appears, a CN appears in its place. So we're going to increase the number of CNs by one, um, and then notice the NC is also created, um, so we're going to add one new NC. And this is basically what we do for all the pairs in the frequency array and yeah just run through all of the rules look at what new strings it would create and update those frequencies accordingly um yeah so if this number for example if there were instead like 10 occurrences of cc then we would get 10 new C cns and 10 new ncs so that's the number aux here for short for occurrences um, and that's the function used to update this frequency dictionary. Now we just repeat that 40 times and this is going to be much faster than actually creating the string because when we're creating the string, it's going to get like trillions of characters long, whereas there are a much more finite number of possible pairs um, that could exist within this string. Okay, now let's suppose that we have our final array here. This is just a very small example. Um, how many of each element would there be? Well, in this first case, there are two NNs, which means that Ns are going to get two plus two. Um, NCs have five, so we're going to get five more Ns here and five more Cs, and down here, BN, we're going to get two more Bs and two more Ns. Now, you might already notice a problem with this, which is that uh, every character is counted twice. So... If I just come up with some example here, this is not going to fit, obviously. Uh, this n is going to get counted twice, once when we count the nn's and once when we count the nc's. So we actually have to sum all of these together um, and divide by 2. So in this case, n would become 11 over 2, um, and c would become 5 over 2, and b would become 2 over 2. Now notice that these are not integers, and that's a problem. And this is because... Uh, not every character is counted twice in the final polymer string. So every middle character is counted twice because they are part of uh, two different pairs. <clears throat> Sorry, but everything at the end is only counted once because it's only part of one pair, which is either the first two or the last two. So we consider the first and last characters right here and add one 
to their occurrences, just so that when we divide, they actually get counted once instead of... Uh, it just works out. The math works out somehow. So we adjust for that accordingly. And after that, we divide by 2 for every instance. So if we, see, uh, if we say that n and c are the endings, this would actually become 12 over 2, which is 6. Um, and this would become 6 over 2, which is 3. So given the frequency array of all the pairs in the final polymer string, we can use this code to deduce the frequencies of all the individual elements. After that, we just compute the min and the max and subtract them, and that's our answer. So yeah, that's it for day 14. If you have any questions about my explanation, feel free to leave them down in the comments below, and I will answer you. If you would like to see the code, I will upload that to the GitHub repository, which is linked to down in the description. And yeah, hopefully today's video was fun and uh, helpful, and I'll see you tomorrow for day 15. Thanks for watching.